In this video, we'll be talking about hyperplasia versus hypertrophy. Both these processes are actually cellular adaptation process. So let's see what does these terms mean. Hypertrophy refers to an increase in the size of individual cells leading to an overall increase in the tissue or organ size. In contrast, hyperplasia means increase in the total number of cells. The size doesn't change. So it's important to understand that in hypertrophy, there is no new cells which are added, only the cells become bigger. In hyperplasia, there are new cells which are added, but the sizes doesn't change significantly. So hypertrophy occurs in response to increased workload or work demand. Whereas hyperplasia requires some kind of stimulus, often hormonal or growth factor like stimulus. So let us try to understand the process of hyperplasia in a bit more details. So hyperplasia simply means increase in number of cells. How does these increase in number of cells happen? Because there is enhanced cell division. Because there are programs which are activated that lead to cell division. That is the essence of hyperplasia. Let's take the example of the hormonal hyperplasia in the female breast. During puberty, there is a dramatic increase in the uh, breast size in females. But how is that possible? Because during, preg during pregnancy and also during pre uh, puberty, the estrogen and progesterone levels fluctuate. That lead to a mammary gland hyperplasia. So these estrogen are steroid hormones, so they bind to estrogen receptors which bind to specific estrogen response element into the DNA. And that lead to transcription of several genes which are responsible for cell division, cellular proliferation. And thereby, there are increase in the number of cells which forms the mammary gland. And that's how the entire breast becomes bigger. Now, Hyperplasia can be pathologic and physiologic. This particular example is a, is a physiological hyperplasia. That means nothing has gone wrong. It's natural. Now there are hyperplasia examples which are actually pathological like this one. This is a normal endometrium and this is known as endometrial hyperplasia. That happens due to an imbalance between the estrogen and progesterone level. That can lead to an abnormal thickening of the endometrial lining of the uterus. So obviously, this is a pathological situation of hyperplasia. Now, there are many other examples of hyperplasia. For example, when wound healing happens, there are many new cells added which lead to an enhanced wound healing. For example, when there is an injury in the liver where one part of the liver is, is damaged or destroyed, that eventually regrows slowly. That means it's also another example of uh, tissue repair where hyperplasia is the mechanism. There are more cells added which lead to a recovery. Now let's talk about hypertrophy. Whenever we talk about hypertrophy, muscle hypertrophy comes in our mind at first. Just like hyperplasia, hypertrophy can also be pathologic and physiological. Hypertrophy means increase in size of the cells, but there are no new increase of the cells. So simply means there are bigger cells. The hypertrophy organ has no new cells and it just, it has bigger cells. This is the most important thing one has to understand. So let us look at a mu muscle fiber to understand how this process happens. But before that, let me tell you that again, just like hyperplasia, there are two categories, phys physiological hypertrophy, pathological hypertrophy. For example, the, there is an increase in left ventricular hypertrophy when there is more, uh, more hemodynamic overload. And muscle hypertrophy is natural. It happens when you lift more barbells and dumbbells in a gym or even do extensive physical work. So question is what factors can cause hypertrophy? Obviously the hemodynamic, the, the, the overall uh, physical demand is ov obviously one of the key factor. It could be also be stimulated by hormones such as steroid hormones. You often have seen bodybuilders taking steroids. Also, it could be induced by several growth factors and growth hormones. Now, obviously, there are chemical and mechanical signal that can induce hypertrophy. There are several receptors present on muscle which can interpret these kind of signals such as insulin-like growth factor receptor 1 is one of the key players in this pathway. There is myostatin, androgen, there is also osteocalcin. These are 
potential players. Mechanical sense, signal can also be sensed by integrins, which can lead to muscular hypertrophy. So all of these things lead to increase in muscle protein production, myofibril synthesis that ultimately lead to a bigger muscle. Now the massive growth of the uterus during pregnancy is a good example of hormone induced enlarge enlargement. So basically in this case what happens is the overall uh, estrogen receptors present in the uterus gets uh, many signals which lead to an increase in the overall size of the uterine cells. So they become bigger. Often it's important to note that hyperplasia and hypertrophy can occur side by side. Sometimes we think it's exclusive and these are like uh, non-overlapping mechanisms, but that's not correct because many of these procedures are kind of overlapping and happening side by side. So there are pathological hypertrophy that we have already talked, which is like left ventricular hypertrophy, which makes the uh, left ventricle more thicker, might lead to arrhythmia and sudden death. What happens here? Here, there is an increased production of cellular proteins that make these muscles even bigger. So there are receptors like growth factor receptors, insulin growth factor receptors, there are adrenergic receptor, there are mechanical stretch sensing receptors known as mechanosensors. All of these can ultimately lead to upregulation of several transcription factors such as MEF2, GAL4, NFAT. And all of these things can lead to and synthesis of new contractile protein, induction of embryonic and fetal genes. So ultimately, this can basically lead to a growth of the muscle, which would be leading to a problem. During muscle hypertrophy, it's also seen that alpha form of myosin is replaced by beta isoform. So here is a quick summary about hypertrophy. So I hope you got a quick overview about hypertrophy and hyperplasia. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.